Hello, hello. It's Monday, so you know what that means. Time for Beg Knows America. That's where we find the heart in every single story. This week, CBS News contributor David Begno introduces us to a man who is showing everyone what it takes to make people feel good. Oh, you guys are so beautiful. Don, so good to see you in Georgia. Oh, this isn't fair. You guys just melt me. Every school morning, week after week. That is a great wave you have and an even better smile. Thank you so much. For years now, this man has been standing on the street with something nice to say. Good morning, you are so beautiful. Have a great day. His wish for a good day. Have a wonderful day. Is good for everyone, good morning. Do I particularly get a the book? children Maybe, on their way to school. Oh, boom, thank you. It's for the laborers on their way to do hard work. Oh, buenos dias, mis amigos. Gusto de verte, como estas? What he does is constant. For 79-year-old Dick Kazan, an average guy with an above average goal. Everybody, no exceptions, wants to feel important. I want them to feel important. I want them to feel beautiful. I want them to feel needed. And I want them to feel safe. You see, even sometimes I direct a little bit of traffic. It started off as something simple, meet my neighbors, control the traffic. But what has it become for you over the last seven years that is so much deeper? I get a feeling of love. I do. I, I know that a lot of these people are moved by me. It's gotten to the point to where you know them on a first name basis. I saw you, they roll down the window and you start calling out the kids' names. Yes, I make it a point to learn the names because if you want to make people feel important, you've got to learn their names. Joe, have a wonderful workout. If he misses a day, everybody asks yeah, where he buddy. is. Um, so I think he just instills community. Dick Kazan lets people know that they're important, starting in his own neighborhood. I greet them in supermarkets, I greet them in the gym. And so many of those people show their appreciation right back. April 15th, 2017, Trader Joe's parking lot. Yes. Dear kind man, I was having a rough morning, dealt with not so friendly people, but you made my day when you surprised me and told me you too have a nice day. I saw a woman coming out of the store and she looked really depressed. I just came up to her with a smile. I went into shop. When I came back, she'd scribbled that on a, on a napkin and wow. left that for me. Yes. It must have made quite the impression. I could see a different person than the one I greeted just a few minutes earlier. There are more notes on the wall of his home office, valued alongside family photos. But missing are the awards and plaques of a businessman and a company founder to signify the person that he used to be. In the past, I was driven, I came from uh, not the best childhood, and I was determined to make a lot of money, and I did, I made a fortune. And I was not a very nice person. I was a really driven person. I was an honest man, but a really driven man. And people didn't enjoy me, to be perfectly frank, other than wow. maybe my immediate family. That was pretty much it. What did y'all do? What type of... What it did... was computer leasing, high technology leasing. Hmm. We had about $2 billion. I mean, it was a very big company with offices nationwide. His home office is now the world headquarters of the Kazan Today. It's his online newsletter with a distribution of about a thousand that has recipes for success and little droplets of inspiration. So you were in your 40s when you made this personal pivot. It was on my 46th birthday. And you've been a different man since? It didn't happen overnight. I began a transition. An overachiever who was even a bodybuilder points to an unlikely tapestry of acclaimed men who he says gave him guidance. It's Michelangelo, it's John D. Rockefeller, George Bernard Shaw, Gandhi. I needed some inspiration to kind of guide me there. With Gandhi, at times I found myself lost in the process. So did he. Michelangelo he says to us, uh, the greater danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it's too low when we reach it. Right. That's most people. Good morning, Carla, so nice to see you. And they somehow led him to share a very simple message. Good morning. Good morning, Dick, how you doing? So good to see you. Good to see you. Have a great day. What he does day in and day out resonated so deeply with Philip Hartwell, an investment banker who wrote to me about how his Palos Verdes estate neighborhood in suburban Los Angeles has been made better by Dick Kazan. 
what was the takeaway you wanted when you wrote to me for people to get from seeing this? I just wanted people to know that there still are good people here mm. and that, you know, you start the kids off and whether the kids appreciate it, I'm sure the parents do, that you're starting them off in a good note. Good morning, young man. So nice to see you. What would the old Dick Kazan think about what you do today here out in front of your home? He'd never do this. Really? Never do this. Really? He would say, what is wrong with you? You gave up that great big house. And he thought in terms of money, drove Porsches, uh, that Dick Kazan. And he was always in a hurry. And he always had his watch out for any meeting or whatever. If this wasn't making money, he wouldn't do it. Wow. And I mean, that's how driven that, that Dick Kazan was. No small talk, no, no jokes. His words are seemingly small. You are so beautiful, you're gonna charm everybody today. But there is a big message behind them. Thank you so much. So the old Dick Kazan would have probably looked at that and thought, waste of time, waste of money. That's exactly it, waste of time, waste of money. Doesn't that man have something better to do with his life? And the 79-year-old Dick Kazan thinks? Thinks, my God, it's the most important thing he's ever done aside from being a husband and a father. Dick Kazan, a neighborhood star, more dependable than the mighty sun to brighten your morning. You see, he doesn't just wish folks a good day. His simple act of kindness makes it happen. Great smile, thank you. Hmm. Dick Kazan, thank you. This is a story that came to David from one of the viewers. So if you have a story for David, you can reach him and his team at Dear David at CBSNews.com. I love this story and I love him saying, Dick Kazan's awareness about himself. People didn't enjoy me very much. Mm. And you can realize that about yourself and think, I can do better, I want to be better. Yeah, how, how many of us are that honest about yeah. who we used to be? Yes. Not, Not many. too many people. And, and you often think you can't change that much, that who you are, you, be, you just intensify. Especially at that time. age, right, Tony? You, apparently you can. Yeah. He's proof you can. That's a beautiful story. Somebody that sees the good in everybody. Uh, that's yeah. that's the message that I think. Because is he was he was searching for the good in himself. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, David. Thank you, Dick Kazan. That was good.